Welcome to Mikon's hardware. In my previous video I have told you about AMD Radeon Pro WX7100 graphics card and how to overclock it with a BIOS modification. In this video I have got you overclocking results for this WX5100 and this tiny one WX4100. These two GPUs are very similar to WX7100 and to overclock them you use exactly the same procedure and if you want to see the step-by-step -step guide then welcome to watch my previous video video. Before I go into the test results, let me mention a few important details. So, with the WX4100 I was not able to adjust the voltage using the Watt tool because the Watt tool simply doesn't work with this GPU. Still, it did not affect the performance because 65 Watt is more than enough for this tiny GPU to be able to work at its maximum clock frequency that I was able to achieve. For my particular GPU, the maximum stable frequency was 1280 MHz, which is not bad at all. Another thing to mention about WX4100 is this I.O. bracket. Buying on wstore.sk website, there are two options, one with a half-sized or low-profile bracket and another one with a full-sized bracket. The GPU is absolutely identical and it performs identically or clocks identically. The only difference is the I.O. bracket, so buy the one that you need for your particular chassis. The WX5100 is basically identical to WX7100 when it comes to configuration and bias modification. The only major difference is that this GPU does not have extra PCI Express power connector, thus we are limited to 75 watt of electricity supplied by the motherboard PCI Express slot. I would recommend to set TDP to 70 watt and the absolute maximum TDP or the GPU power draw to 75 watt. If you go above that, you are risking to burn down your motherboard because the motherboards are designed to pull or supply maximum 75 watt of electricity through the PCI Express slots. With this TDP and slight undervolting, I was able to achieve 1230 MHz on the GPU core. Still, 70 watts is not enough to maintain this frequency under heavy load, so in games usually the GPU would keep its frequency somewhere around 1200 MHz. Now let's take a look at some benchmark numbers, starting with the WX4100. The GPU is rather weak and overclocking numbers are not that impressive. I was able to achieve uh, 1280 MHz on the GPU core and 1900 MHz on the video memory. For testing I use 960p screen resolution because WX4100 is surely not enough for 1080p gaming. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the stock configuration delivers only 2936 FPS. Overclocked version improves the result to 3040 FPS. Far Cry 6 stock configuration 3340 FPS, overclocked 3642 FPS. Rainbow Six Extraction 3447 and overclocked 4054 FPS. F1 2021 stock 7488 FPS, overclocked 8401 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider stock configuration 3138 FPS, overclocked 3644 FPS. Combining all these results and taking the average, we are getting 4050 FPS for the stock configuration and 4556 FPS for the overclocked configuration. As you can see, these results are far from impressive and with overclocking we are getting only about 10% extra performance, but it is still not enough to say that this is a gaming graphics card. Yes, you can play some games at 960p, but most likely you would not want to use WX4100 to play the modern titles. With AMD Radeon Pro WX5100 we see a much different picture. This GPU uses a much larger and much stronger GPU die that is TDP limited in the default configuration. I was able to increase the TDP to 70-75 watts and increase the clock frequency to 1220 MHz for the core and 1009 MHz for the GPU video memory. With this configuration we have the following numbers. This time I'm testing 1080p screen resolution. Assassin's Creed Valhalla stock configuration gives us only 2536 FPS and overclocked configuration gives us 4151 FPS. As you can see, overclocking WX5100 almost doubles the FPS. Far Cry 6 stock configuration 3238 FPS, overclocked 5563 FPS. Rainbow Six Extraction stock configuration 2941 FPS, overclocked 5474 FPS. 
F1 2021 stock gives us 6277 FPS, overclocked 100-132 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in stock we have 2936 FPS, with overclock 4962 FPS. Combining these results together and taking average, WX5100 in its stock configuration delivers only 3546 FPS. Overclocking and increasing TDP for this GPU delivers us 6076 FPS, which is almost double as much compared to the stock configuration. To have some sort of a reference, I also add GTX 1066GB numbers. In these five games, on average, GTX 1060 delivers 7087 FPS. So, even overclocked the WX5100 is not able to match a GTX 1060, but the gap is not that big. And WX5100 does not require any extra PCI Express power connectors, and it also has 8GB of video memory compared to 6GB of the GTX 1060. The results speak for themselves. Now you can decide if you want to buy any of these GPUs, but I will remind you that if you use my promotional code, you will get 20% discount when buying any of these WX GPUs from wstore.sk website. In my opinion, these WX GPUs have their own unique usage. For example, WX4100 is very well suited to some old workstations where you need to upgrade your graphics card and you do not have possibility to install full-size GPU, yet you want to connect multiple monitors, you want to have video encoding decoding, and you want to have at least 4 gigs of video memory. In that case, WX4100 would be a perfect fit. With a slight overclock and increased TDP, WX5100 can almost match a GTX 1060 level of performance. Sure, it is not quite there, but on the other hand, the GPU comes with 8 gigs of video memory, it does not require any extra PCI Express power connectors, and it has 4 DisplayPort outputs. So it would be a perfect fit to update old workstations if you would want to turn them into a gaming computer or if you need a graphics card for some sort of um, professional workloads where you need 8 gigs of video memory and professional stable drivers. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational. Bye for now.